power levels increasing exponentially. It's over 9,000! Over 9,000! Over 9,000! 9,000! Hey, what's up, everybody? GamerGuy7 Aces here, and I finally reached over 9,000 subscribers. Yes, I can finally use that joke now. <laughs> Well, all right, guys. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done my uh, last update video. You know, my last video uh, where I hit uh, 8,000 subscribers was in, I posted in August. I actually hit 8,000 subs in July. So if you look at it, it's taken me three months now to break another 1,000 subscribers, which is kind of weird because my predictions was that I hit 9,000 subscribers last month in September. Yeah, <laughs> I was wrong. See, not all the time my predictions accurate. But yeah, so this is actually the longest time, the slowest amount of subs I've gained. Like, it's taken from July to October for me to hit, uh, you know, uh, to go from 8,000 to 9,000 subs. And, you know, it happens. You know, stuff happens. You know, usually I was always getting new subs every two months. And the fastest I grew, the fastest subs I grew this year was uh, from, from 7K to 8K. So, uh, yeah, that, that was when I hit 7,000 subscribers in, like, early June. And then I hit 8,000 subscribers in late July. So that was bait. I mean, you can call it almost two months, but it was basically one month. So, you know, so it's just, it's random. But now that I hit uh, 9,000 subscribers in early October, like the first week of October, I predict I'm going to hit 10,000 subscribers in the end of November. Cause it's like a pattern, you know, like it's like sometimes I get subs now one month, like in one month apart, sometimes I get subs three months. So, you know, it's cool, but yeah, you know, uh, so my predictions will be that I'll hit 10K finally in the end of November. But thank you guys. Thanks to everyone for helping me reach 9,000 subscribers. You know, wow. You know, it, it's, you know, it's a long way coming. A lot of people sure do tell me that I deserve more subs than I do, you know, but you know, I'm, I'm grateful for what I have and stuff, you know? So yeah, here's hoping to 10k subs and beyond. Also, today is my birthday, so happy birthday to me. Yep, I decided to post this, uh, my update video on my birthday. And uh, yeah, you know, it's pretty cool, you know, getting older and older. And uh, yeah, my channel is growing and all that stuff. And um, yeah, you know, my birthdays are pretty much uneventful. Like, I'm just going to chillax, you know watching netflix or you know i'm just going to relax today my birthday you know have some friends come over i don't do much on my birthday especially in this age when you're in your mid-20s you know you don't you know it's not gonna like we're gonna have a birthday party and birthday cake like nah that's all childish stuff but uh yeah <laughs> but anyway also you know a lot has happened since i hit 8k subs i remember when i made my 8k sub video i said that i promise you guys before my night before i hit 9k subs before i make another update video the smash bros skit will be done and i will have posted at least one sonic theory both of those have happened so i've actually fulfilled my my promises you know and uh let's talk about the smash bros skit that was a huge success like wow that was huge like right now the video almost has 2,000 views 2,000 views it's huge you know I mean this is basically the first time any type of animation or CGI or whatever animation project has actually come true and worked because you know like I don't even want to talk about that Minecraft one but you know and technically this is the second big project this year that has you know seen the light of day you know the first one was my year that was my collab album earlier this year and yeah now this year is the super smash brothers skit so i consider myself lucky you know like many people say they're going to do something and they're going to do a huge project and it never sees a light of day or it never works out or it never finishes but yeah this finishes and now like i can see myself doing even bigger and better stuff i really enjoyed the smash bros skit it was fun i hope all of you guys are watching this i hope all of you watched the skit if you haven't what are you what are you doing here <laughs> what are you waiting for and um yeah you know uh a lot of people loved it it actually appeared it actually made the front page of a website uh www.newgrounds.com which is basically a site where people do animations and flash animations it's on the front page there and a lot of people like it you know there's hardly any hate even the video that I, on my channel only has like three dislikes and right now it has like over 100 likes so that is huge 
And um, yeah, you know, there. And I know a lot of you guys missed this out, but there's actually one little homage in the animation. There's a part when the, you know, when the video game mascots are fighting, and the, and the Pokeball falls down. You know, and, and Sonic he picks up the Pokeball. That was supposed to be reference to the other animation, Racist Mario. If you guys remember that animation, it was like it was huge. It went viral. And so like you know, he kind of he basically injures Sonic, and then Sonic gets trapped inside this Pokeball. And Ash Ketchum, you know, he's like this creep. But you know, he's just gonna molest him and do creepy things to him. So that's why I had Sonic be the one to pick up the Pokeball. Cause I don't know, it was just like, I, I, I really liked that animation. It was a cool reference. I know a lot of people missed that. It flew over a lot of people's heads. I actually told my friend that he was like, what, no way, dude, that's actually what you were trying to reference? I was like, yep. Also, it matches Sonic's shoes. You know, the Pokeball is red and white. Sonic's shoes is red and white. So yeah, that's about it. And um, yeah, if you, if you notice all of the, their move sets and all of their moves and attacks is exactly like how they move in the Smash Bros game. So, yep. Don't have much to say about it though. It just it's finished and I'm done. I'm, I mean, I'm glad it's over. You know, that's the best part about doing projects when it's finished. So, uh, yeah. And um so if you guys haven't spread the words, continue spreading the word of the animation to everyone you know. You know, I try to get some uh, YouTube reactors to react to it, but they probably get a lot of emails and messages every day. So, you know, I, you know, it's no problem they won't be able to react to it. It looks like they only react to videos that get hundreds of thousands of views. But I'm sure my animation will get there. It, like, it, like, it's only come out less than 10 days ago and it already has over 2,000 subs. I mean, it already has over 2,000 views. So if you do the math, it's only going to increase and get higher and higher. But yeah, also I did my, another Sonic Theory, I did my second Sonic Theory. This time it was on Knuckles, and uh, you know, Knuckles hallucinating the events of Sonic Adventure 2. That one was so huge. The moment I posted that, it got views so fast. There's not a single dislike on that video at all. Like it has like 60 likes right now and like zero dislikes. I was surprised how many people loved it. Like if you go back to the Amy Rose, you know, Erotomania theory I did, like that has a couple dislikes. It has like over 80 dislikes, almost 100. But it has a lot of likes and it has like over 70,000 views right now. But the Knuckles Theory video, like people just loved it so much. Like it's doing so well. It's like, wow, you know. So I will definitely be doing more Sonic Theories with my friend Husky Z. You know, we got two planned out this month. One is going to be, uh, he's basically going to be, I'm not going to spoil that one. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of like a response to the most popular theory of Sonic. And the other one's going to be a Halloween themed. Uh, Sonic theory, so we don't want to miss that one out. I got all together. I got like four theories planned out for the rest of this year So that's pretty so th that it's gonna be really cool You know, I'm actually excited that uh, you know I'm doing these theories because you know It's nice to do other series on my channel other than gaming videos all the time because you know And I'm about to get into that the whole gaming thing I'm about to get into the whole gaming thing, but you know with the theories so many people love that because it's so unique It's a novelty, you know like Nobody is doing Sonic theories right now because right now people are too busy cracking on Sonic and saying how Sonic should die You know the video games suck. So nobody is even thinking to about taking Sonic seriously or you know making theories about it That's where I come in. So, you know, I like doing novelty stuff like that where you know Where th people haven't you know things people haven't done before can't say the same about gaming You know everybody's on gaming and right now. It's just so oversaturated but I'll get to that later. Um, yeah. Also, uh, Smash Bros. Ballad. You know, it's funny because a lot of people like the ending of the uh, of the Smash Bros. skit when Crash came out and he was like, "Crash for Smash." I mean, he said, "Hey, that kind of rhymes." Like, yeah, you know. And some people say, "Wait, why did you put Crash? Why didn't you put Banjo Kazooie?" Because let me tell you guys, Banjo Kazooie, as of now, has a better chance of making it into Smash Bros. than Crash. Crash is pretty much dead at this point. I think Activision owns him. I forgot. I know it's not Sony anymore. But yeah, I would love to see Crash and Smash Bros, and I know it's never going to happen, so that's why I put Crash. Because I wouldn't want to put Banjo-Kazooie there, and then pretend if he makes it in the game, or even if he's a trophy, and then people will, will go back and comment on the video saying, Ah, hey, this video is officially dated. Banjo-Kazooie's in Smash. But I'm willing to bet at least $50 that Crash is not going to be in the game, so... But whatever. Anyway, and uh, and I know, guys, Goku is not never going to be in Smash Bros. That was just a comedy thing I put. Like, the whole skit is comedy action. That's what I like. Like, the first 20 seconds is so action-packed. And uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of cool. I wish I could do more animations in the future. But, you know, that takes a lot of time. You know, that animation, uh, my animator, Lightning Lion, uh, he worked on that for five months. He worked on that since May. 
you know so from may to october october 1st was when it was officially done or no october 2nd and i posted it that same day october 2nd you know i did say the video would come out in september but then i ended up you know it ended up getting delayed for like two more days just to polish it up and stuff but i came out with this idea back in july of uh 2014 because i was so inspired by the palatina trailer for smash bros you know it was anime animated style so that came out in e3 last year that like nintendo won e3 last year like it's so opposite from this year which they suck but anyway that's besides the point so in july i remember when i hit 1 million youtube views i uh i basically if you guys watch that video i talked about how i wanted to do two things i wanted to do i wanted to do a collab album and i wanted to do an animation skit or i called it anime skit back then both of those have been fulfilled and it's feel it feels so good when you're able to look back at something you wish you did and you actually did it you feel so accomplished so yeah then in september last year is when i came up with the script so i've been working on this for a year now you know i had to change the script because you know originally mewtwo was supposed to be me yeah yeah <laughs> you guys can't believe that right mewtwo was supposed to be me and but i thought it would be a little too self-centered a little too narcissistic so i'm like nah you know let's make this mewtwo especially you know around that time in the fall last year that's when mewtwo was announced to be added in uh smash bros's dlc later so i was like you know let me just change my character to mewtwo but yeah that is my little story behind the you know creation of the smash bros skit so yeah you know it costs a lot of money to make and uh, i wish i could do more animations like that but you know but oh well anyway um yeah nintendo direct you know ever since satori iwata's passing you know uh may he rest in peace uh the last nintendo direct was on april fool's day you know literally april 1st i don't know when they'll ever do a nintendo direct but i like to see one when they announce any of the characters for smash bros i don't know but anyway now i come to talk about a serious thing that today and this is something that's definitely been bothering me a lot it's definitely the problem with gaming today now this is going to be a rant and I, and I hope this is not long because I want to keep this video short but uh the problem is okay now if you guys know over the summer Jimmy Kimmel he made a video a hilarious video where he poked fun at YouTube gaming and the concept of the game and that received so much hate from like from all the gamers and most of them were kids saying stupid stuff and then he spent two more episodes devoted to making it in front of the gaming community I mean he, he had Markiplier come in and you know and give him some insight on why people love gaming but I mean let's be honest it wasn't much it was still satire and uh you know it's kind of sad not because of what jimmy kimmel did like what he did was hilarious but it was just sad because a lot of people made us look bad like the you know the kids they, they, they just made people who game on on the computer people who game on youtube just look so immature and stupid but you know that's the gaming community for you like the vocal minority is always the most immature and things but that, and it happens you know but i actually did not find that offensive at all I actually found the uh, college humor video a little bit more offensive and that was the video where this guy was basically making fun of all the LPRs on YouTube and how a lot of them are the same copycats like everyone wants to be like John Tron everyone wants to be like Kuban Romani or everyone wants to be like this Sonic tuber this cage tuber or this reviewer and you know we just get so many versions of ourselves now I mean it didn't offend me because it reminded me of myself but it just it was a wake-up call and especially like reading some of the comments like one person said and I hate it when they say the end please like comment subscribe let's see if we can get a like goal and then they have like crappy or shitty dubstep music in the end as their outro I kind of laughed at that but it's like it's so true and you know speaking of that the problem that I've been experiencing and a lot of youtubers have been experiencing is oversaturation i'll call it oversaturation and bandwagoning let's talk about the first one oversaturation now i started my channel in november of 2011 i didn't start and i started posting gaming content in january 2012 since then there have been so many lpers that have started on youtube since then so i want to ask you guys a good question since i started my channel since you have discovered me how many other new LPers have you seen that have started YouTube after me? And I'm not talking about people who talk about games. I'm talking about people who do LP. How many of them do you know that have not been promoted by bigger YouTubers? Yeah, that's what I thought. You don't know of any of them, but there's so many of them. And the problem is they all copycat from each other, kind of like the Sonic tubers, you know, like me and Blue Rush 92, we like to joke so much. We always crack on these Sonic tubers because a lot of them are so unoriginal. They all like want to be like one person. They think if they just start doing an LP, if they post one video, they'll be famous overnight. 
and it's not how that works you know it's just you know and this has been bothering me because there's all a huge oversaturation on youtube it's breaking the sub boxes the sub boxes are really broken and that is actually affecting a lot of people's views including myself you know like so far ever since i finished my season of sonic my gaming videos have sucked man they sucked like lego dimensions hasn't gotten any views like that's why i ended the walkthrough i just resorted to doing live streams now i'm doing chibi robo i'm doing five giveaways free giveaways on chibi robo ziplash with the amiibo bundle and right now as i'm recording this it's almost been 24 hours since i posted it and i've only gotten about 60 views and only like 15 likes it's like what happened to everybody where are they at though and some people say oh gamer guy is just subscriber burnout no no my boy it is not subscriber burnout because this season of sonic the season of sonic i spent a whole summer playing nothing but old sonic games from the classics to the modern games as far as like as, as recent as sonic lost world which is old that game came out two years ago all of those videos have more views than the new games i did so far like lego dimensions and chibi robo how is that possible something happened between august and now when youtube broke away with google plus things have actually gotten worse i remember when i did my 8k sub video i was excited because youtube broke up from uh, google plus and i thought it would make things better but i think it's made things worse and this is even affecting the big youtubers like dashi on his vlog channel he posted a bloopers to his like ghetto doctor uh, number two he had to delete that video and re-upload it again because he said something was wrong with the sub boxes and basically his views were at an all-time low on that video he had to re-upload it I've been seeing a lot of big uh, like YouTubers suffering from the broken sub boxes and have to re-upload a video and then it gets a lot of views. Cause it's like, no, like there is no such thing as subscriber burnout to me right now when a lot of people have watched my other videos. Like I did the animation skit, I did my Sonic theories, even my top five Dim Sonic games and that's gotten a lot of views. But I go to gaming and people just don't see that. It's because the gaming arena in YouTube is so oversaturated by all these videos and so many new YouTubers that are coming every single day as we speak, posting the same games, everyone's doing the same thing. So YouTube algorithm is basically screwed. So it doesn't know how to, you know, sort out the, the new from the, the, the old and the, and the veteran. So it just blends it all. And that's why a lot of people's views have been suffering, even the big YouTubers. I was talking to Pack Attack, who has over a million subscribers. He said his views have also been suffering a bit in Lego Dimensions. And you know, he's known to get like over a million views in his part one. He doesn't even have like half a million right now. So it's like, what's up, you know? And it, it's dumb. That's why I'm glad that I've, I'm now trying to do other series and other gigs like Sonic Theories because, you know, there's going to come a time where gaming is just going to completely crash on YouTube. It's going to completely crash. And I don't want my channel to die. I don't want my channel to just wither away. I want to have something else to do to keep my channel alive. I mean, I know I'm called Gamer Guy 7 Aces, but that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean shit if, you know, if, if gaming is suffering. So that is the problem. Like, I already explained that oversaturation. I don't want to repeat myself on that. The next thing is bandwagoning. Now, this is a controversial topic, but it's something I have to address. Now, okay, let's talk about the Nintendo Wii U. You know, the Wii U is basically dead or dying now. Like, Nintendo's E3 E3 was so bad, man. It was so bad. And right now, the Wii U isn't coming out with any games this holiday, besides Yoshi's Woolly World, which doesn't even count because the game came out like four months ago. The only games that are coming out on the Wii U that are new is Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is coming in December, and uh, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Those are the only two games that are coming out on the Wii U, you know, which is completely sad. So there is a lot of scarcity in games, not only Nintendo, so many games have been delayed. Like I can, I can, I can list you how many games are delayed. Zelda Wii U, of course, has been delayed. Star Fox Zero has been delayed. Uncharted 4 has been delayed. Lego Avengers was delayed. Even Sonic Boom Fire and Ice was delayed. Mighty Number no. Nine was delayed. I mean, uh, even games people think are going to be bad, like Metroid Prime, Metroid Prime Federation Force was delayed. So many games have been delayed for next year. Like next year is going to be jam packed with games. Also, Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympics was supposed to come out this year. It was also delayed. So because of that, there's not that many games coming out in the holidays, both for Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. So because of the scarcity of games, everyone is being desperate now. Everyone is now doing games just for the sake of doing them. Like so many people have bandwagon on Skylanders and Lego Dimensions. People I've never seen be interested in lego or skylanders are doing them now and i mean it's like i understand if you did like a lego or skylanders back in the day and you got back to it but i'm talking about people who never cared at all about lego 
and they're just doing it now simply because of views and money. Now you guys know me, I mostly do Lego, Sonic, and Mario on my channel, you know? And at, at the time I was thinking about doing Skylanders, maybe because of Bowser and Donkey Kong, but then I came to the realization that, you know what? I really don't care about Skylanders and I'm not going to be fake and bandwagon on Skylanders and do it just for the views because that's not right. And you know, you know, I want to be authentic. I, I, I don't want to be those people, those view or money whores. So that's why I didn't get Skylanders. I got Lego Dimensions instead, you know? I will never bandwagon. Even games that you've never seen on my channel before, like Chibi Robo or Zelda. It's true, I've never done a Zelda game on my channel. I mean, I've played the old Zelda games, but I've never done Zelda. But anyone who's been subscribed to my channel will know that I've been talking about doing those games since they appeared first appeared in E3. I've always been interested in doing them. And that's the problem because everyone is bandwagoning on these games is now getting in the way of people that actually do care about LEGO, like people like me or Pack Attack or Blitzwinger or all those other people that care about LEGO games, you know? So uh, that is my problem. And you know, like before, like I always took pride into doing like handheld games, like handheld LEGO games. They always get a lot of attention on my channel because a lot of people overlook them. Now, you know, I'm glad LEGO Avengers didn't come out now because everyone would have been doing the handheld version and that would have been bad because everyone would have been doing that and that everyone would have bandwagon of doing that which would have overshadowed my videos on them you know it's just it's bad people would do anything when things become scarce i'm telling you if all the games were not delayed this wouldn't even be a problem you know because uh, because everyone would be doing their the, like star fox or other those games you can guarantee i'm not going to do star fox on my channel i might live stream it but live streaming and actually doing a walkthrough are two different things so i mean that is my rant you know so I don't want to dwell on this more, but you, you, you guys know, like I've even talked to some of my viewers and my subs. I've had like a couple that if you even told me that, you know, hey gamer guy, I appreciate you being authentic. I appreciate you not selling out and bandwagoning on these games you don't care about. You know, that's why I love watching your channel. You know, that makes me feel good. It makes me feel good that people actually enjoy watching me because I'm authentic and I'm not a bandwagon. That gets so annoying because you know, especially if you're a big fan of something, you can you can easily tell when someone does not a fan or when someone doesn't know what they're talking about, you know? And it's a huge pet peeve of mine. As I've said before, I, you know, I've noticed that YouTube has always had a broken sub box, especially around this time of the year. I complained the same thing last year when Lego Batman 3 came out. But you know, the weird thing is at the same time, the holiday season is always the, se the time when my views increase the most because you know, it's the holiday season. Parents are getting games with their kids and all that. But it's always the first half of the ho of the fall season where my views just completely drop. And then towards the end, it skyrockets. It happened last year, it happened the year before last when I did uh, Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man, and my views were so low that I ended the LP. Then lo and behold, by next year, the views were so high on that, I went back and I, you know, and I basically continued the walkthrough and all the views, you know, came back again on the LP. You can't tell me that subscriber burnout, you know, because when, when you have subscriber burnout, that means nobody's watching your videos again. It's not that people are going to watch your videos later. No, that's not subscriber burnout. That's just your videos not appearing on the sub feed, you know? So yeah, but yeah, that's all I have to say. So I do hope things get better because if you guys haven't been aware of this, YouTube is going to start their new subscription paid subscription service which is going to come in a full effect on october 22nd basically what this is you have to pay a fee of ten dollars a month if you want to have no ads on youtube if you want an ad free youtube you have to pay ten dollars a month to youtube and basically uh the people who have this feature the youtubers will still be making money from youtube for people who watch their videos with no ads and you know and uh i mean if you guys would know more about this feel free to google about it because you know I, I don't want to talk about it much, but um, yeah, so um, so yeah, YouTube actually said that uh, partnered YouTubers will actually be receiving 25 times more of their revenue than they did before. So like, you know, if you don't have a problem watching ads, you don't have to pay for this at all. YouTube will be the same for you, but this only applies to YouTubers who are partnered. So if you're not partnered, it won't affect you. If you're partnered, you must uh, basically abide by the rules. You must agree to the new terms before all your videos will be privated, and you know, yeah, and you won't have monet and you won't have any of them monetized. So yeah, so that means like you know, some people are complaining about it, but I really don't have a problem with it at all because that means now if you want to have an ad for YouTube, all you gotta do is pay ten dollars a month. Because I hate, I mean, I won't say I hate it. I didn't mind about it at first 
but now I do kind of mind when people use adblock. I know a lot of people, a lot, a lot of you guys do use adblock, but I don't because, you know, I'm actually patient, you know, I can always skip the ad and I mean, it's just an ad, you know? So with YouTube doing this and, you know, and YouTube is still a business, still a corporation. They still need to make their money. And when everyone's using adblock, YouTube is losing money. So I understand this, but my fear is, I hope this works. I hope this is not going to be fueled to the fire because already YouTube breaking up with Google Plus has made things worse and the sub boxes are broken as all hell. So only time will tell, you know, I hope the subscription fee thing, I hope it's going to be good, but I don't know. I just hope things can get back to normal. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to have to think of other ways to, you know, uh, other things to do on my channel, like the Sonic theories, you know? And uh, yeah, because I mean, I'm not doing much games this year because like I said, there's a scarcity in games. I'm only doing Chibi Robo and then I'm going to live stream Yoshi's Woolly World. And then I'm doing a uh, Zelda Triforce Heroes. I'm doing the three way co-op with my friend Verest and Master Link 40. And, you know, I recall a lot of people were not excited or hyped about this game at all when it came in E3. Now everyone is going to do co-op on this game. Like, and one of my subscribers told me like, hey, gamer guy, I thought a lot of people didn't care about this game. Now all of a sudden people want to do it. Again, bandwagoning because there's not many games coming out. You know, I would rather not do any games and just do other stuff on my channel and wait until a game comes out that I care about than to just do any type of game because there's no games on my channel. I have to do something that's not right so but whatever you know this video has been mostly a rant video and you know it's on my birthday which is weird i don't mean to rant but i just wanted to get a lot of this out of my chest but yeah hopefully things get better on youtube because you know i spend a lot of time on youtube and i don't want to see channels dying you know or you know or anything happen to my channel because of what's been happening but yeah oh well, well that's all i gotta say but thank you guys anyway for helping me reach 9k subscribers here's hoping the 10k subscribers and uh yeah thank you guys for the birthday wishes and uh, yeah stay tuned for more videos and until next time swag out